Good morning, everyone. Good morning. On Sunday, December 5th, next week, we will have our congregational meeting presenting the 2022 proposed budget, so we hope you all can attend. Our board meeting for December it will be December 8th at 7 p.m. And December 7th at 6 p.m., we're going to be packing all our bags for the nursing home and shut-ins, and they will be delivered at the end of that week. Um, after today and during the week, myself and the, uh, the outreach committee will go through everything to make sure we have enough for everyone. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, everybody that participated, everybody that donated. It's greatly appreciated, and I'm sure they'll be overjoyed to receive our gifts. And I'd also like to thank, as you can see, the church was all decorated. This past Monday night, about 17 members of the congregation came out and decorated the church. It's greatly appreciated. It only took us two hours, and it was great to spend time with our church family. In, as you can see today, we finally got back to getting the newsletters. But there's a military overseas request in here. Uh, the fiance of Lauren Madiak is currently serving in Saudi Arabia. Anyone wishing to send a card or a letter, please mail by December 9th in order for him to get that by Christmas. So please pray for Jimmy and all of our military personnel throughout the world at home. And thank you to our military and our families who sacrificed so much to keep our country safe and strong. God and God bless America. And one more thing, anybody that brings for uh, gift cards for White Gift Sunday, if you can mark on the gift card how much it's for, only because when they distribute them, um, they'll know how, who to distribute what to. So thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. This is a day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome each one of you here today to worship. Welcome to Advent, our first Sunday of Advent today, as we anticipate in great expectation the birth of Jesus Christ, but also the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember the birth and the second coming where we're living is right between right between where we live now. But we're living that way together, the way it should be together, as we gather together today for our Holy Communion as well. Just good to see you all this morning. I'm greeting those who are watching us. Um, it didn't snow too bad, but I'm glad you all made it. I mean, I made it over the mountain okay. It was all right for me. Uh, but if you're home watching us on FaceTime, welcome. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Let's all rise for our invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. I'm going to ask Melissa, Devin, and Emma to please come forward now for the call to worship Advent with me. Thank you. 
with us. He came just like we needed him most. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self and material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Jesus Christ has looked with favor upon you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. And you may be seated. Morning. The first lesson comes from Jeremiah 33, 14 to 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which we will be called, the Lord our righteousness. Second lesson. 
comes from 1 Theologians 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make you your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. gospel is written in the gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. These things begin to take place. Stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be given to you from Almighty God and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's Advent, beginning of the church's new year, season of expectation, the season of anticipating anew the promise of Jesus' birth, and the season of hearing again the promise of Jesus' second coming at the end of time. In Advent, we watch and we wait because we know that the Christ child who was born so long ago will be born in our hearts once again. And the true spirit of Christmas will live within us and touch us one more time. We also watch and we wait for Christ's return. Every time we celebrate the sacrament of communion, we affirm Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Now there's a song that's familiar to all of us, I'm sure. This first verse of the song speaks about watching and waiting for the coming of an important person 
a person who knows us and our every action, a person who is good and loving and who expects us to be the same. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. He's making a list and he's checking it twice. Going to find out who's naughty and nice. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. You know the song? You know the song, don't you? Sure you do. It's Santa Claus is coming to town. Now, just think. We don't have any problem with an image of Santa making a list and checking it twice in order to find out who's naughty and who's nice. We don't have any trouble with Santa sitting in judgment and scratching names off the list. But we might have trouble thinking about Jesus coming again in judgment of us. We might find it hard to think that way about Jesus because it sounds harsh. We really don't like the fact that Jesus said on that day he would separate the sheep and the goats. It's maybe because we've acted more like a bunch of old goats than the sheep of his flock. Maybe it's because we've seen a bumper sticker. I just saw this bumper sticker, and it reads, Jesus is coming again, and boy, is he mad. Now, our gospel lesson from Luke focuses on Christ coming again. Right before our gospel lesson, Jesus is teaching in the temple at Jerusalem. Some people there were talking about the beautiful stones used to build this temple. And Jesus said, you see these stones? The time is coming where not one of them will be left in place. They will all be knocked down. And some ask him, teacher, when will this all happen? How will we know when these things are about to take place? So in answer to that question, what Jesus says is alarming, yet he tells his followers not to worry. Even as wars, riots, earthquakes, starvations, plagues, pandemics, and terrible diseases encompass the world, even as Jerusalem itself is uprooted, even as people of the world are fainting because they are frightened, even as his followers are hated and arrested and punished, jailed and betrayed, they will get through it all by being faithful to him. Now when these things begin to take place, Jesus said, stand up, raise your heads, because your liberation is drawing near. You know that the kingdom of God is near. Be on guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with the worries of this life. This Advent season cautions us not to become absorbed in those daily worries of life. Advent calls us to be focused on the big picture, on the big promise that Jesus Christ is coming again. We are worshiping today because Jesus' followers held on to that truth. The truth we proclaim again, again as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion together, the truth that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Yet, you know, as you look around today, we have plenty of indicators which would suggest that this truth of Jesus Christ hasn't really had much of an impact, other than giving us this vague promise of good things to come. When we look around at this material existence, we might wonder whether God is an active participant or a bystander. We might wonder whether Christ's birth and Christ's death and Christ's resurrection and promise to return have any long-term effect. In our heart of hearts, we might just be inclined to become, if not skeptical, maybe just a little bit doubtful. You know, we will always be able to look around our world and see pain, and see suffering. This world is full of injustice and full of 
disasters, natural and man-made, and inexplicable tragedies. You know, we have already experienced and are still experiencing the results of the COVID pandemic. And we undoubtedly will sometime experience personal tragedies or losses or injustices or natural and unnatural disasters. Life certainly can appear to be just as a veil of tears and the advent call to watch and to wait might make us some murmur, well, watch and wait for what? More heartaches, more troubles, more headaches? You know, I think one way we can say what all the advent watching and waiting is not about is by looking at Christmas decorations. These are two things to remember about these decorations. First, they're beautiful, yes, but they're temporary. After the holiday separations, they will be come down and be stored away until next year. Secondly, these decorations are exterior decorations, things seen, not unseen, things visible, not things of the spirit. The temporary and exterior things we rely on now to get us in the Christmas spirit are so short-lived. Heaven and earth will pass away, said Jesus in our gospel lesson, but my words will not pass away. Certainly, there is nothing temporary in what Jesus said. But, but how do we get a hold of this Advent message? How do, we, how do we internalize Advent's call to watch, to wait, to anticipate, to expect? Here's a couple of thoughts. Let's enter this season of Advent with an attitude and a mood of wonder and openness and vulnerability. Just let's put aside all the sophistication and all the skepticism and all the self-reliance. Let's put that aside. And return. Return to a childlike sense of wonder and mystery. Look beyond the decorations, the busyness of the holidays, the stresses and the strains and the anxieties that seem to all be part of this season. Look beyond these. Stand up. Raise your heads and look to God for hope. And expect that the past, the present, and the future are held, tightly held by God through Christ. Look to God for peace and expect that renewed and strengthened relationships with God and with one another will come about and will grow through Christ. Look to God for joy and expect that the present and future delight and happiness will blossom through Jesus Christ. Look to God for love and expect that no matter what has happened or will happen to us through Christ, we have been and will be shown God's steadfast and God's unshakable interest in us and care for us. So stand up, raise your head because your liberation, your salvation is drawing near. Can you feel it? Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Want to please rise for our next hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Let us together say our statement of our belief, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him and all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. Before we pray, I just want to update you. We've been praying for the hostages in Haiti. Um, and uh, to my knowledge, there, are, there have been two returned to their families out of the 17. Um, we don't know any details, and if anybody knows anything, let me know. But um, our prayers are being answered uh, slowly but surely, so uh, we will continue to pray for them. So let us pray. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and of all of creation. We especially at this time pray for the hostages in Haiti. 
Hear us, O God. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Hear, hear us, O God. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. Hear us, O God. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, and healing. We especially pray for Carson Barron, Kaylin Butler, Denise Campbell, Tom Campbell, Gerald Coombe, Leanne Christina, Dylan Crowley, Donna Dubik, Kendall Earl, Dale Fredericks, Charlotte Fritz, Lillian Gernert, Paulette Gilly, John Groover, Delroy Haas, Diane Heckman, Barry Hauser, Linda Hauser, Will Humes, Austin Klein, Pastor David Noble, Gail Lofman, Francis McHugh, Julie Meckes, Larry Meckes, Donald Miller, Lamont Miller, Denise Minot, Mariana Nestor, Frank Niedespaugh, Gail Petrisky, Darlene Phillips, Earl Pratt, Vicki Pratt, Barbara Renninger, Harry Rausch, Sally Rausch, Lisa Sanchez, Kay Sheeler, Richard Shook, Debbie Smith, Curtis Steigerwalt, Sue Stroll, Jean Swartz, Diane Therian, Jeff Tierney, Austin Troxel, Kevin Tyson, Julie Wood, Kristen Wood, Gary Zayner, Marlon Zayner, Jessica Ziegler. Lord, be with all of our life transitions. Hear us, O God. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of disaster response and Lutheran World Relief and other relief organizations. Hear us, O God. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. is calm and all is bright everywhere but in your heart tonight they're singing carols of joy and peace but you feel too far gone and too far out of Somewhere in your silent night, heaven hears the song, your broken heart has cried, hope is here to
just lift your head for love has come to find you somewhere in your silence. From heaven's height to manger low, there is no distance the Prince of Peace won't go. From manger low to Calvary's hill, when your pain runs deep, his love runs deeper. you child and he always will somewhere in your silent night heaven hears the song your broken heart has cried hope is here just to lift your head for love has come to find you some silent night lift your head and lift your heart Emmanuel will meet you where you are he knows your hurt he knows your name and your Somewhere in your silent night, heaven hears the song, your broken heart has cried. Hope is here, just to lift your head, for love has come to find you. Somewhere in your silent night. Heaven hears the song, your broken heart has cried. Hope is here just to lift your head, for love has come to find you somewhere in your silent night. Love will find you. Love will find you. Love will find you. God of promise, you cause the branch of hope to bud and flower. We offer the fruit of our labor. May what we do bring reassurance to those seeking evidence of your goodness. Use our gifts as signs of what deliverance can mean. We join with Christ in the struggle for justice. We commit ourselves to the quest for peace. Amen. And now as we prepare for Holy Communion, know that all of you are welcome at the table here at Giant Stone Church. I'm just glad that we can celebrate the sacrament together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat. He said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of this, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks to God for the cup, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples to drink. And he said, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this, do this for the remembrance of me. Consecrate these gifts of bread and drink, and bless us as we receive them at this table. We may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another. We may continue to be faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And you may be seated. I ask you to please come forward. As the altar, we will be celebrating.
at his table. Sin runs deep. 
body of Christ broken for you, Aaron. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, Aaron. Take and drink. And now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you, Aaron, and go forth and serve our risen Savior. Amen. Please rise for our close communion prayer. Almighty God, who gives the true bread which comes down from heaven, even your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant, we beseech you, that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Our closing hymn.
And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.